We made it. The wave equation. After that, if you ever forget it, I will never forgive you. D2y dx2 is 1 over v squared d2y dt2. So before we go and try to solve the wave equation, let's just enjoy the wave equation. So it's told us a few things. One is it's told us this velocity we're going to see is the velocity that a wave propagates in the medium, but also the velocity is a property of the medium. So the continuum, the string, has a tension and a mass density, and this is just a way to combine those to get yet another property of the string. It's just like the natural frequency of a simple harmonic oscillator. Uh, for a mass and a spring, if it had a mass m and a spring constant k, we combine those to make this other natural property of the natural frequency, square root of k over m. Here, if its string has a tension t and a mass density mu, we can combine those to give you some natural property of the string, in this case, the velocity of the wave equation and the velocity of the waves. Another thing we can think about to enjoy the wave equation is it's kind of like f equals m a for a continuum. If you apply f equals m a of a point particle to a continuum, it's basically what you get. And it even looks like f equals ma. If you ever forget it, just remember f. Remember, this was the force due to curvature of the string. m, well, m is some property of the system. And actually, it does have m in the top, since this is 1 over v squared. It's mu over the tension. But this is some characteristic of the system. And this is the acceleration. It really is basically just what happens when you apply f equals ma to a continuum. Other systems that make waves <coughs> are not quite this nice. Uh, there's a reason we do the string first, but it really does just directly look like Newton's second law. Another way I like to think about the wave equation is it's um, how to translate on this side oscillations in space and oscillations in time on this side. We'll be doing this in demos later, but if you imagine you're holding one end of the string and you shake it in time, what happens? It makes a wave that propagates in space. Right? And what sets the relationship between the frequency at which I shake it and the frequency at which, at which it spatially oscillates? The velocity, right? If I shake it here at some velocity, the faster the wave moves will affect its wavelength. Right? Or you can look at it the other way. If you have a wave coming along um, with some spatial wavelength and you're going to watch the end of the thing shake, the higher the spatial wavelength, the faster it'll shake. And depending on the velocity of the wave, the faster it'll shake the end. It's basically the, just the direct connection between oscillations in space and time. So there's some ways to make the wave equation, I think, more intuitive. But now, this being a physics class, we do have to attempt to solve.